Across the Fence, we spotlight the University of Vermont Center on Aging. With our aging population, we'll learn about the center's important work in areas like research, education, and public policy. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. It's well documented that a major demographic shift is underway. Our population is aging, not only in Vermont, but nationally and internationally as well. The shift will have significant ramifications on important programs such as entitlements like Social Security and our health care. UVM's Center on Aging is playing an important role in identifying and understanding the challenges posed by our aging population and in finding solutions to those challenges. Joining me other centers director Dr. Bill Pendleberry and the center's executive director Jeannie Hutchins. Thanks so much for joining us today. You're welcome Judy. Now the Center on Aging is beginning its sixth year. What are some of your major accomplishments and successes? Well Judy I think one of them is our continued collaboration with the uh, Fletcher Allen Healthcare and their elder care department. Um, we support them in programs such as NICHE which is nursing education around elders and the HELP program which is a delirium prevention program. Mm -hmm. um, we also uh, each of them the university and Fletcher Allen bring to the table some expertise and some advocacy and we're working very well together and we're glad that that partnership has continued. Mm -hmm. And the center has three core areas of focus. One is education. Can you talk a little bit about why education is so important and what you've accomplished in education? So what, what we've accomplished um, are, I, I'm very proud of several programs that we've launched and continue to sponsor. We uh, have two gerontology symposia uh, that we sponsor every year, one in the northern part of the state and one in the southern part of the state. Uh, and we have educated almost 500 people uh, per year, uh, people who have direct uh, relationships and provide services to people, uh, elders um, in the community. Uh, we'll be sponsoring two symposia again this year, in two th uh, I should say in 2015. Um, we've also, um, uh, Jeannie and I have uh, both uh, been mentors for groups of medical students at the College of Medicine to encourage them around issues related to aging and promote careers in aging. Um, I continue to function as the course director for an annual AHEC geriatrics conference that provides up-to-date information for primary care providers in, in the state of Vermont. So, so there are a lot of areas where we have our fingers in the education pie that um, we've developed and, and continue to sponsor. Now you mentioned the symposium. Um, what are some of the, the topics or issues that may be discussed during this? Well, over, overall the, the, the goal of the symposium is to promote education around best practice um, in terms of developing or de uh, delivering services to elders. Uh, this year the symposia are going to focus on dementia and aspects of dementia care uh, and um, re-educate -re people about up-to-date information about what's going on in the world of dementia and Alzheimer's disease and how can we do a, a better uh, job of, of providing services to people with dementia and their families. Mm -hmm. Now it's, it's interesting because I mean, people have been aging forever but all of a sudden it seems like this is becoming more and more of a, a hot topic. Is it just because that population is growing or is it there's so much more research or is it both? Um, it's probably both but I think the main uh, driver is the fact that we are an aging population and it has to do with people like me who belong <laughs> to the baby boom generation mm -hmm. and we're now retiring in droves and to give an exam a couple of examples the state of Vermont ranks second uh, only behind Maine in terms of median age and at the moment we're somewhere in the middle uh, of the states in terms of the percent of people of the age of 65 but we are quickly going up that list and probably within about 15 years we'll be number seven or eight in terms of percent of people over the age of 65 so nationally it's a phenomenon but it's a p particularly significant phenomenon in the state of Vermont that is, uh, uh, we are an aging population. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned your involvement with some of the medical school students. Um, is this on their radar at all or are they more thinking about other areas of medicine? I, I think geriatrics and geriatric practice, uh, practice continues to be a relatively low priority for most medical students. Um, we're, one of the things that we're going to be trying to do, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, is to 
um, double our efforts, efforts at encouraging not only medical students but also undergraduates to begin to think about careers in geriatrics and gerontology. But quite honestly, I think it, it remains pretty low on the radar of most medical students. Well, research is another core of the center, and one of the things that you've done is to establish an annual research award. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, um, it's actually um, named for Armin Grams, mm -hmm. who uh, was at the university for quite a while and kind of started the original Center on Aging. Um, it's a $50,000 grant. Uh, we put out requests for proposals in the fall. Um, we're about ready to put out our third year request. Um, last year it was awarded to two physicians who are studying um, fatty acids and their relationship to um, cognition. So it's a, a popular award. We're um, uh, honored to name it after Dr. Grams. And um, it also uh, is research that is around aging research. And our hope is that this small amount of money will launch them into research that will um, bring in more grant dollars to the university and further that research. And so the center's third core is policy. How involved is the center in shaping policy in Vermont? Well, I think one of the things that I'm really proud of about our related to our accomplishments is that we have forged a number of partnerships with uh, community advocates and community um, policy makers uh, around issues of aging. And as an example, or a few examples, we have strong partnerships with the Alzheimer's Association, with the um, uh, Department of uh, Disability Aging and Independent Living with the Visiting Nurse Association, and most importantly with people in the community and groups of people who are passionate and enthusiastic about advancing uh, the the welfare of, of seniors in our community. So, we th we think we we um, have important an important message to provide to policymakers and uh, movers and shakers throughout the state. And certainly, m my sense is that over the last six years. They've really listened to what we have to say, and um, Jeannie, in particular, has become a, a board member for a number of these organizations. So we are at the table uh, and have a voice in, in shaping the future of how people who are aging get mm -hmm. treated in this state. Can you give me an example of maybe a particular policy that, you, that you've worked on or are working on that, that relates to that? Uh, we're actually contracted to um, sit on the Governor's Commission for Successful Aging. So we're looking at three areas, uh, livable communities, um, long-term care, health care for individuals, and um, mature workforce. So we presented to the governor uh, different ideas, um, things to go to legislation. Mm -hmm. So that's one area. The other area is that um, we are leading the conversation in Vermont around community health workers. It's a national conversation that's going on to uh, determine state by state whether community health workers should be certified whether there should be legislation around um, who is a community health worker. Mm -hmm. Looking at global payment coming forward, everyone knows community health workers need to be in there, but states are struggling with whether CMS or whether uh, state Medicaid agencies are going to request certification for them to be included in that payment. So those are a couple of the policies that, that we're working very um, hard on. That's pretty complicated yeah. <laughs> issues. <laughs> I mean, when you, know, you talk about aging, but then I mean, when you get down into the nitty gritty of it, there's a lot that needs to be done. Yes. And so over the past years, Across the Fences um, featured guests and um, information about support and services at home known as SASH. And from the beginning, I guess your center has been involved in SASH. Maybe we can talk a little bit about that and what, what you've been doing. Well, SASH is a great program that um, began as a pilot at uh, Heinenberg Senior Housing with Cathedral Square a few years ago. And it has, is now serving about 4,000 Medicare recipients across the state. It's become a national model. Um, it had just research, uh, received an extension for two years on funding. It's actually the funding is uh, flows through the Blueprint for Health. So it's actually Medicare dollars paying for services at home, um, which was unheard of before. It also opens up a great opportunity for research. Um, our fellows that we're going to be talking about a little later, um, because of their robust data collection and they're using electronic medical records and um, electronic storage, Throughout the state, they're able to share information, and so it makes it a very robust um, venue for researchers to go in and look at pre and post, and it's kind of a, a captive audience of elders that are willing to help researchers discover what's working, what's not. And how does SASH exactly work? 
Well, it uh, started in concrete housing, mm -hmm. so there's a sash coordinator who comes in and then there's a sash nurse. And what that coordinator does is they do health education, they do individual, if a person says they want to be a sash member, mm -hmm. and the only requirement is they're Medicare eligible. So if they want to be a SASH member, then they have a um, plan of care put in place. So they look at all of their um, maybe chronic disease or, or health issues. And then the SASH coordinator helps them with education, helps them with medication checks, transitions between the hospital, if they go into the hospital for a surgery or something. And then the nurse is there to help with other things to kind of troubleshoot. But what's great is that they, they don't duplicate any efforts, the VNA is still in there, home health is still in there across the state, area agencies on aging are still doing case management, mental health is still in there. So they work as a team, but the SASH coordinator and nurse are kind of the, the feet on the ground um, eyes that mm -hmm. see these people every day and so can kind of intervene when there's, there's problems arising. And the statistics have shown they kept people out of the hospital, out of the emergency rooms, decreased medication. Um, it's real successful program and like I said it's nationally recognized. So who else? Oh, sorry, go ahead. I, I just wanted to jump in Judy with one statistic which mm -hmm. is that looking at the first 18 months of the SASH program mm -hmm. comparing people who are in the SASH program versus people who are not the average savings of Medicare dollars per month is about seven hundred dollars per person. That's amazing. Yep. Um, who else is involved at the Center on Aging at UVM? Well, uh, Janet uh, Nunziata is our um, education um, coordinator, and she's involved in um, most of the education and programming that the center does. We also have a faculty advisory group who we meet with quarterly to make sure that from the university's perspective we are staying on track and uh, meeting the objectives of the, of the university. I actually respond, um, my, my uh, relationship with the university is that I, my direct supervision is through the provost and so I report to him in terms of the success of the center. We also have a, a community advisory committee of, of people who are not affiliated with the university so that we can be kept abreast of what's going on in the community and what they view as priorities that the Center on Aging should be involved with. And so what are some of the things that the center is going to be pursuing in the next five years? So I, I think the most important thing, and I, and I believe this is um, public knowledge, that the university will at some point be la launching a capital campaign to raise a significant amount of dollars to support programs throughout the university. And the university, um, two or three years ago, developed a list of priorities that will be uh, supported by um, this capital campaign. And we were actually we were able to get two of our priorities on that list. One is to support the recruitment of a uh, dir uh, director of gerontology and geriatric education and we'll be looking to recruit um, a MD or PhD who will oversee uh, gerontology and geriatric education not only in the medical school but across the university and that, that will require a three million dollar gift for an endowed chair so that's one priority. The second is to continue to support our student fellowship uh, we currently uh, support either a medical student or a nursing student um, for one year to um, have a focused experience in geriatrics and gerontology and we've, been, we've always had to scramble to find the money to support that, that fellowship. So another priority that the capital campaign will support is a $2 million endowment to sort of put that fellowship in, in perpetuity. So the, I'm looking forward to, to those two programs. Uh, coming online or, or those, the, those two funding opportunities coming online and also um, we're looking forward to continuing the, the programming and the, and the uh, relationships that we've already established. And so Jeannie, how can our viewers get more information about the Center on Aging if people have questions or want to find out? Well the best place is to go to our website mm -hmm. which is www.uvm.med slash Center on Aging or you can just Google Center on Aging at the University of Vermont. Mm -hmm. And uh, is that something that you would encourage families to pursue too, just if they want information in general? We have a lot of links to providers throughout the state. Um, we have links to um, support groups. Um, and we keep it pretty current with a lot of updated information on trainings or um, talks and things that are going on around aging. Mm -hmm. Would you say education is probably the key to what you folks are all about? I think that's our number one priority. I, I, policy is a close second, mm -hmm. um, but 
uh, I think our biggest success so far that we've been since, since we've started six years ago has been around education and getting more and more people around the state, uh, particularly those who provide services to elders, up to speed about best practice. Well, I want to thank you both for joining me today. Thank you. You're welcome. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.